Channel 7's Frank Turner was the first reporter on the scene, and he spoke with witnesses who helped him reconstruct the attack in all of its viciousness, and he joins us now live from Detroit Police Headquarters downtown. Frank? Well, Guy, in the wake of this traumatic and sad incident, Detroit Police Chief Stanley Knox held a press conference that was at times very emotional for him just a few moments ago. We'll have more on that just a bit later. As of right now, seven Detroit police officers, including a sergeant who stood by and watched this incident without intervening, have been suspended without pay. At the scene, Malice Green's blood still runs in the street at West Warren and 23rd on the city's southwest side. It was there that at 10.30 last night, he was beaten to death, according to witnesses, by two white police officers of the 3rd Precinct's so-called Booster Squad. Those officers have been identified as Walter Butson and Larry Nevers. They are plainclothes officers who ride around the neighborhood in an unmarked car. Now, Green was stopped on Warren at 23rd when the officers approached him. He had something balled up in his fist, according to witnesses, that he wouldn't show the officers. And according to them, that aggravated the police officers, and using their flashlights, they just started beating him. And when they pulled him over, they told him to get out of the car, get out of the car, and we were asking him what was the problem. And, and then they went there saying, open your hand. He had his hand balled up like I got this key, and he had it balled up, and he wouldn't open it. All of a sudden, they came up behind just started hitting him in the back of the head and pushed him down. He just went unconscious. His eyes were open, but he wasn't moving. And they kept beating him? They kept hitting him until he fell out unconscious. Daisy Baker says he could only watch helplessly and in horror as 35-year-old Malice Green was savagely beaten by the two plainclothes police officers. How many blows, you think? I wasn't counting, but I could see it had to be at least about eight a piece. Was he fighting back? He wasn't struggling? fighting back. He had his hands up till his hands was fell down. He wasn't even fighting back. All of this was just minutes after Green stopped to talk to this he, man he from his car. And officers Butson and Nevers, known as Starsky and Hutch, rolled up. I don't know what it did then. He had his hand balled up, and they said, what you got in your hand? And then they went to beat him. That man, that's, did they drag him out of the car? No, they beat him in the car. They beat him in the car, then the other one went on the other side, opened the driver's side door, and, man, they, they, they beat him down like a dog. Did, did he do anything at all? Did he no. Spoke to no. No, other than not open his hand, they beat his knuckles in first, man, this stuff first. Did he have drugs in his hand? I have no idea. I have no idea. Witnesses by the dozen were either standing nearby or driving past as the beating took place, but the reputation of Starsky and Hutch keeps most off camera. When I turned around and came back, I saw blood all over the car and blood in the street and the officer yelling at him and I saw the officer strike him once with his flashlight in his head. Was he fighting back at all? No, he wasn't, you know, he he was like, at that point he seemed like he was already, you know, powerless. And who was striking yeah. him, the plainclothes the officer? The plainclothes officer was struck him with his flashlight. Did he ever make his way out of the car? Uh-uh, uh-uh. They had to drag him out of the car. They had to. Well, they told us to leave. So we left, and the next thing I know, he's laying out in the street full of blood. And when we left and came back out, the emergency was out there, all right? They then, wouldn't touch it. They wouldn't touch it. Then they came back and started hitting the guy again. He wanted no defense to do nothing to nobody. Even, even after EMS showed up, they, they hit him a couple more times. A couple more times. So I wanted to help him, but what I'm gonna do then? I just be getting licks. I wanted just to say something, but you know, I ain't, what can I do? What can we? We couldn't do nothing. I thought they were gonna stop after a while. Well, I thought he might have had something in the car, like weapons or a big amount of drugs or something. But it was just a routine traffic stop. Or he must might have seen him buy drugs or something. I don't know what made him do it though. And then he got out, and the man got out to open his back of his trunk up and just wiped the blood off the flashlight and put it back where he had it. At. Now, the two plainclothes officers principally involved in the beating, Butson and Nevers, are 24 and 19-year veterans of the police department, respectively. In fact, Nevers is the most highly decorated officer at the 3rd Precinct. This is obviously creating a traumatic situation for the police department as well. As I mentioned earlier, Police Chief Stanley Knox held a news conference just moments ago, and here's what he had to say. In my direction, seven officers will be suspended today. The investigation by the Special Assignment Squad of the Homicide Section is continuing, and a police board of review has been impaneled. I feel this incident is disgraceful and a total embarrassment to all good officers that, that work so hard day after day to make this department one of the best in the nation. 
Mayor Young, who I spoke to earlier today regarding this matter, was, has worked long and hard to bring this police department and the community closer together is also very upset that something as shameful as this incident could have happened. Everyone was hurt by this senseless act because everyone has worked so hard with much less trying to make the community and police a team. And to receive a blow like this actually brought tears to my eyes. Now, the chief indicated that the five uniformed officers suspended along with Butson and Nevers either participated somewhat in the beating or stood by and watched. Meanwhile, tonight, Dr. Kassim from the Wayne County Medical Examiner's Office is listing Malice Green's cause of death as multiple blunt force trauma to the head. He also had some scattered injuries that he says are consistent with a struggle. We are also uh, told by the chief that some contraband, namely some kind of illegal drug, was also found at the scene. He wasn't clear on whether or not it was in the car or just at the scene, but he also says whatever occurred last night, it should not have resulted in Malice Green's death. Reporting live from Detroit Police Headquarters, I'm Frank Turner, Channel 7 Action News. Guy? Do we know how many blows officially yet from the medical examiner? Officially, we've not been told that. He would say that there was only one death-causing blow, and there was more than one after that. But we don't know specifically how many, but witnesses say quite a few. You said that these people didn't want to talk to you on camera because they knew Starsky and Hutch, knew all of them. What's the history there? Why were they afraid to talk? Well, they're in this so-called booster squad. Now, usually they handle uh, high-profile narcotics and, and uh, auto theft cases in the neighborhood. And according to witnesses we talked to, they're very heavy-handed. We've been told by many people that they're known for grabbing folks, shoving them up against cars, being very rough with them, knocking them around a bit. However, no one had ever seen them be quite as rough as they were with Malice Green.